All right, let's uh, let's get started with the class. So right now it's December, and December, the end of the year, is a great time to reflect on what happened during the year and if we accomplished all our goals. I like to think about what went well, uh, what didn't go well, what I can do better. And so it's good for you to also think about um, your English progress and kind of reflect and evaluate if you're making the progress you want to make in English. So I'd like you to tell me in the chat, are you happy with the progress you made in English in the past year, in 2016, just write yes or no if you are happy or um, not so happy with your progress this year. Let's see what you say. Okay, we still have some people joining us. That's great. Uh, okay, Mihai says 50-50. Yeah, that's, that's pretty common. Okay, a few people say yes. Uh, someone said no. Yes, yes, no. Okay, definitely no. So we have a, a, a mixture of people who are happy with their English progress in 2016 and people who are not quite satisfied. So that's great because there's always room for improvement. So I'm going to teach you today six things that you can do to improve faster and accelerate your learning. And they're really simple things, but sometimes they're hard to put into practice consistently. But I think that um, if you take note of these things and you really make an effort to apply them to your English learning and your English study in the upcoming year, in 2017, uh, you'll make a lot more progress. And if you're already happy with your English progress, then maybe you can improve even more or have more fun while learning English. So uh, these secrets, what I'm calling the secrets, the secrets of successful students come from my teaching experience. I taught for several years in classrooms in Brazil. I gave group lessons, I gave private lessons, I did some lessons um, in companies, uh, and also my experience in working with students here at Espresso English. So nowadays, I actually work with hundreds of students, and so I get to see a lot of students and their progress and what they do well and what they do not so well, unfortunately. So based on comparing all of these experiences and my observations, I've come up with six major things uh, that the successful students do and the unsuccessful students maybe don't do or don't do as frequently. So let me see if I can get the PowerPoint up. Oops. Okay, can you guys see the PowerPoint? It should say Secrets of Successful English Learners. Um, let's get started with the first one. So, successful English learners make a habit of studying English. Does everybody know what a habit is? A habit is something that you do regularly and usually without thinking about it. So a habit is something maybe you do automatically. Um, it doesn't take much effort because it's such a normal part of your routine that you don't have to think about it. So good examples of habits would be like brushing your teeth or taking a shower. These are things you don't have to think about, right? They just um, uh, you do them automatically because it's so much a part of your routine. And what I see successful English learners doing is that they make studying English into a habit. I found this really interesting quote. It says, motivation gets you started. Habit keeps you going. So sometimes students ask me, oh, it's just so hard to stay motivated to learn English, right? Um, I Sometimes I'm just tired or I don't feel very inspired or very motivated to, to work on my English. 
And it's true that motivation is very hard to sustain, okay? Motivation is something that comes and goes. Some days you're going to feel great and feel very motivated with a lot of energy, and other days you're just not going to feel like studying English. But what keeps you going, what keeps you continuing to learn English is habit, okay? Let me just switch back over to my video. Okay, I'm back. So motivation is what gets you started, but habit is what keeps you going. So, you know, another thing that sometimes students tell me is I don't have time to study or I can't find any time to study consistently. But I think you have to be careful because successful students make time to study. Okay, there's a difference between having time and making time. Does anybody know the difference between having time and uh, making time? Let's see what you say in the chat. Okay, I see a few questions about particular grammar points. I'm going to save those to the end, all right? Um, Nobody knows the difference between having time to study English and making time. What do you what do you think is the difference? Tell me in the chat. Let's see. I'll just wait just a moment because I think the video is a little bit delayed uh, from our chat. Yeah, okay, so Merta says making time is making an effort to do it. That's exactly right. Yeah, making time is doing your best. Very good. Exactly. So have time. We all have the same amount of time in a day, right? We all have 24 hours. And making time means to actively make the effort to create uh, an open space in your schedule to study English. And we have another saying that you make time for what's important to you. So I know that during the day you have a lot of commitments. There's work and there's family and maybe you're in school. Um, and there's a lot of, there are a lot of things that are important. But if something is really important to you, if you really care about and you want to do something, you get creative in finding ways to do it. And so that's what I see among my most successful students is they make time in their schedules. They use their imagination, use their creativity, and create the opportunity for themselves to study English. I'm thinking of one student in particular who he had a full-time job and he also had a family, a wife, and uh, one or two children. He also had a long commute, that's the trip back and forth to work, okay? And he also I think he was also studying for a, an extra professional qualification. So he didn't have a lot of time. But because English was so important to him, because he wanted to learn it for work, he made time. So he woke up earlier than normal to study some English before work. He would also use the time of his commute. So going back and forth to work on the bus, he would use that time to study English, okay? And he studied English probably more than some other students who weren't so busy. So he made time to study and the result was that his English went from, he started maybe beginner, high beginner, and he went all the way up to intermediate, very solid intermediate level in a relatively short period of time, okay? Because he made time to study. He didn't use the excuse, oh, I'm busy, oh, I don't have time. He came up with a way to make time, okay? So if you want to be successful, you want you need to make time to study English. Uh, now, how can you make it into a habit so that you don't even have to think about it? Uh, because sometimes I know life gets busy and you might just forget. So the, the best way to create a habit is to link it to another already established habit, okay? So let me give you an example from my own life. In October, I wanted to make a Facebook Live video every day for Espresso English, but 
I had never done it before and I wasn't sure if I would be able to do it every day. So here's what I did. I linked that to another habit. So every day I go to the gym and after I go to the gym, I take a shower. That's established. I do that automatically every day. Well, I decided immediately after my shower, I'm going to do a Facebook live video. So it became a sequence, gym, shower, Facebook live. And the result was that it became easy. It became easy for me to make the time to do it every day. And soon it was just part of my routine. So think about something that's already a habit for you. You already do it every day naturally. That could be eating breakfast. It could be um, driving to work or coming home from work. Uh, maybe you watch a particular TV show or you watch half an hour of news every night. Whatever that habit is that you do frequently, try to make time for your English study immediately after it. So it will become just a routine. Every morning I wake up, I eat breakfast, I study English. Or every night I come home from work, I watch the news for half an hour, and then I study English. And that's the way to make English study into a habit so that it can really become effortless. Effortless means it doesn't require a lot of effort to do it. You just do it naturally, okay? Let's get a little bit of interaction going. Um, uh, tell me what is your what your favorite time is to study English. Do you like to study in the morning, in the afternoon, in the middle of the day, maybe during your lunch break, or in the evening? I'd like to see your answers uh, in the chat. Okay, someone says, learning and practicing English are my hobbies. Well, that's great. Someone else said, after work. Good example. Um, when do you study English? In the evening, in the morning. Okay, good. Uh, in the evening, so you can see in the evenings, uh, Layla says, at night when everyone's sleeping. Someone else said, all the time. The Wong said, in the morning whenever I get time. Okay, so you can see that it varies from person to person because everyone's schedule is different. Everyone's energy levels are different. You know, some people are uh, have a lot of energy in the morning and other people have more energy at night. But uh, the reason that I make lessons at Espresso English, which are short, is so that you can complete a lesson in just 5, 10, or 15 minutes. So all the lessons, most of the lessons on my YouTube channel and all of the lessons in my courses, they're pretty short. They're maybe 5, 10, or 15 minutes at the most. And so that way it's easy for you to do it at some time in your day, you only need maybe 15 minutes, and finish the lesson and learn something, accomplish something without having it take up a lot of time in your day. Of course, the more time you can put in, the better, but I think that consistency is more important than trying to spend a ton of time, okay? I want you to study every day. So successful English learners um, make English study a habit. Okay, let's move on to the second one. Let me just get back over to the PowerPoint. Number two, successful English learners put their English into practice. Okay, this seems really simple, but it's a trap that sometimes English learners fall into. So I want you to look at here, there are four um, areas of English or any language for abilities, and those are reading, writing, listening, and speaking, okay? Um, what do you think is the difference between the ones on the left, that's reading and listening, and the ones on the right, that's writing and speaking, okay? There's a difference between the ones on the left and the ones on the right. Does anybody know what that is? I will tell you in just a second. The abilities on the left, the ability to read and the ability to listen, those all involve understanding English. So you're understanding, when you read, you're understanding what someone else wrote. And when you listen, you're understanding what someone else said. Those are very important abilities. But the ones on the right, writing and speaking, 
those involve producing. So now you're not just understanding, it's you producing the English. You are producing the text or you are producing the words. And one problem I see with a lot of students is they spend too much time on the understanding activities and not enough time on the producing activities. And in order to really be fluent in a language, you have to have all four. Okay, so my successful students always, always, always put their English into practice by doing both the understanding activities and the producing activities. Okay, let me get back over to my video here. Um, and here's Here's the way, yeah, for most people, they need more practice producing than uh, understanding. And here's the way that you can actually put it into practice. Remember I talked about linking uh, habits? Well, here's a way to do it with these areas of language. Every time you read something, your next activity should be to write something. So maybe you read an article in English. After you finish reading the article and learning the vocabulary, now try to write your own article. You can maybe write a reaction to it or a, um, your opinion about it. Or maybe if you read a news article about something happening in one country, you can then try to write an article about something happening in your own country. Or if you read a story, then try to write your own story. If you read a blog post, then try to write your own blog post. So there's always a balance between the understanding and the producing. And you can do this with listening and speaking too, okay? So maybe you listened to an interview. Now try speaking. Imagine that someone else asked you, oh, what was that interview about? And now you have to tell them. So actually speak out loud, okay? You can do this by yourself, okay? So there's nothing stopping you. You can also do it if you have a conversation partner, a teacher who you do private lessons with, or a, um, yeah, a, a friend, an English speaking friend. So every time you listen, try to speak. If you're nervous about speaking spontaneously, then try uh, shadowing. Shadowing is a technique where you um, you listen to a native speaker and then you you listen to one phrase, you press pause and you try to repeat it exactly. And then you listen to the next phrase, pause it and repeat it exactly. It's just listening and repeating, but it can help build up your confidence because I just want those English words to come out of your mouth and it will help you improve your pronunciation. Uh, but it will also give you a little more confidence so that you can get more towards producing, speaking, uh, writing. It's really important to practice these. So all of my successful students, uh, they, they practice producing, speaking and writing, just as much as they practice understanding, uh, listening and reading. Let's uh, hear from you. So in the chat, tell me which area you find most difficult, okay? Just pick one. What's the area that you find most difficult? Is it listening, uh, speaking, reading, or writing? Let's see what you say in the chat. Okay, writing, one person says. Listening, speaking, speaking, speaking. Speaking, writing, speaking, uh, now speaking, speaking, listening, definitely speaking, okay, speaking, yeah. So for a lot of students, um, producing is what's most difficult. And uh, this is, again, don't underestimate the power of doing this by yourself. Because remember, if you speak by yourself, there's nobody around to hear your mistakes. So it can help you get used to speaking English without that pressure of um, other people listening to you. All right, let's see what the next secret is. Let me hop over back over to my PowerPoint. Successful English learners don't let fear stop them, okay? Who here has ever felt nervous or afraid when using English? Just write yes in the chat if you've um, felt nervous or afraid about using your English at some point. Yeah, 
Feeling nervous or afraid is totally normal, okay? It's totally normal, but successful learners don't let that fear stop them from trying, okay? So if you're afraid, the, the natural thing to do sometimes is not to try, just to stay quiet or not even want to risk trying. But I found this great quote by Bruce Lee. He says, courage is not the absence of fear. It is the ability to act in the presence of fear. So this means that to be successful in learning English or in doing anything really, it doesn't mean you're not going to be afraid. You are going to be afraid. You are going to be nervous. That's totally normal. But if you have the ability to act, to take action, despite the fear, meaning you feel afraid, but you say, I'm not going to let that fear stop me. I'm going to try, even though I'm afraid, then um, you're going to you're going to be successful. You're going to make progress because if you let the fear stop you from trying, then you're not going to make progress at all. You're just going to stay paused, stay stopped at exactly the same place, and you're never going to move forward. But if you can feel the fear and still take action, still try to speak, still try to write in English, whatever it is that's making you afraid, then you're going to move forward. Let me get back to my video. And I have a really, really... Uh, oh, and another point is that you have to get through the um, the difficult and imperfect attempts before you can get to the perfect attempts. So this is another thing that sometimes stops students from speaking is they want it to be perfect. Well, I'm telling you right now that it's not possible for you to study, 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 and then everything that comes out of your mouth is going to be perfect on the first try. It just doesn't happen. This is the case with everything, right? If you're learning to play a musical instrument, if you're learning to play a new sport, you are never going to be perfect on the first try or even the first several tries. It takes practice. So um, you have, but in order to get to the closer to perfection or closer to fluency, you have to pass through those imperfect attempts. I have a really good example uh, from my own life, and it has to do with making videos, okay? For a very long time, I was afraid of making videos for you here at Espresso English because uh, it just made me nervous. I didn't want to appear on camera. I thought I was going to mess up. Um, I thought, I don't know, it would be too much work or I, I was just afraid in general. And my other English teacher friends told me, just try it, just try it. it you know, it's, it's not that bad. And so I let my fear stop me for a long time, but then I said, okay, I'll try. And I started trying to make small videos and the first ones were, mm, were not that great, okay? But I practiced and I practiced and I kept going even though I was still nervous. And now it's much easier for me to make videos. So now I don't feel afraid anymore before I come on camera. And my videos are better. So you can apply this to your English learning, okay? You have to go through those difficult uh, and sometimes imperfect attempts before reaching that fluency that you want or before getting to the level where you sound like a native speaker, okay? So um, if you are not going to let fear stop you in the future, then uh, tell me, I'm going, tell me in the chat that I'm going to speak English despite my fear, okay? I want to see, um, Let's see, getting used to something is second nature. Yeah, practice makes perfect, exactly. Um, English is like Portuguese. Yeah, learning any language. I learned Portuguese as my second language and in the beginning, I didn't say everything perfectly. Sometimes I made really embarrassing mistakes or sometimes people didn't understand me and my face would turn red and I'd get really shy, but that's, that's just part of the um, 
progress. Yeah. Marta says, I'm going to speak English despite my fear. Awesome. Okay, let's move on to number four. Okay, let me get back over to PowerPoint. Successful English learners study English in different ways. Okay, what do I mean by different ways? Well, some people really like textbooks and they only study in textbooks. Other people really like movies and so they only use movies. But that's a mistake. In order to really learn English in all of its fullness, that means all of the different aspects of the language and ways of using the language, you need to use different ways and different methods. So here's a whole huge list of ways uh, that you can study. You can read books. And of course, there are all sorts of different kinds of books. There are, there's fiction and nonfiction. There's, um, there are romance books. There are science fiction books. All of these types of books are going to have different phrases and different vocabulary. You can listen to music in English. That's great for learning pronunciation and uh, it's fun, right? Because you can sing along and get the hang of the rhythm of the language. You can watch movies, which are also fun. Movies will help you, as well as TV shows, will help you learn some slang idioms. It will help you get used to uh, hearing English speakers talk fast, right, because we don't slow down in the movies or TV shows. You can learn English with podcasts. That's great for training your listening. And podcasts you have on also all different topics. There's There are podcasts on politics. There are podcasts on current events. There are podcasts about families and travel and sports and any topic you can think of. You can learn and practice your English through chat, like the one we're having in this class right now. And there are also other websites like EnglishBaby.com and different Facebook groups where you can practice interacting through chat. You can join a conversation exchange, okay? A conversation exchange is when you get together with someone else who is learning your native language and so you exchange practice. So you practice some of the time in English. That's for you to practice your English. And then you change and practice some of the conversation in your native language to help the other person. So that's a great kind of informal way to um, practice your speaking. Just Google search for conversation exchange websites and you'll find them. You can go to the theater, okay? That's a little bit different from movies and TV shows, but it can help you to um, see English used in different contexts and in different ways. You can install apps and games on your cell phone. This is a great way to study English when you just have a couple of minutes and you just want to do something a little bit fun to maybe learn some new vocabulary, practice some grammar points, um, games and apps for your cell phone are a great way to do that. Of course, you can take courses like the ones that we have at Espresso English or you can take a course at a language school. Uh, but remember, that's not the only way to learn. So even if you're already taking a course, you should also use some of these other methods. You can read magazines in English, or I should have put also websites. Um, whatever your topic of interest is, if you're interested in cars or hiking or uh you know, music, bands, pop culture. You can find magazines. Nowadays, a lot of magazines are online and practice your English that way. And finally, if you're away from your computer and you don't have your cell phone and you, you're not near a TV, you can practice simply thinking in English. This is really, really powerful and it's one of my biggest fluency tips. Thinking in English is something you can do anytime and it will really help you when it comes time to speak because then you'll be able to speak more automatically, okay, without translating from your native language. Nowadays, when I want to speak Portuguese, I think in Portuguese. I don't think in English and then translate because that would slow me down. So I encourage you to practice thinking in English, okay? So 
out of that list, tell me in the chat which one is your favorite and tell me one you want to try. Okay, so uh, when I was learning Portuguese, let me think. I spent a lot of time, I, I did take courses, and I wanted to try reading uh, books. Um, yeah, you can, watch docu you can watch documentaries in English because there are a lot of different types of TV shows. You know, a lot of students, they watch the news in English, which is great, but if you watch the news, you're going to get kind of the same vocabulary over and over because... Uh, it's a lot of similar stories, so that's why it's important to diversify, okay? So some people like podcasts, uh, watching movies and taking notes, um, turning on the radio every morning when you get up. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, writing your to-do list every day in English. That's a nice little way. Reading the Harry Potter series. Yeah, that's fun. Those are great books. Um YouTube is my favorite, and I want to interact by talking with a native English speaker. Good. Very good. Um, talking, books, thinking in English. Yeah, great. So, you know, depending on your learning style, people gravitate towards one particular method, okay? Gravitate towards means you tend to go in that direction. So some people naturally love reading, and so all they do is read in English all the time. Read, 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 read. But if they don't practice their listening they're going to have a big problem later. Other people are more visual learners, so they like to watch movies and be able to see the scene and what's happening along with the dialogue. But then when they maybe go to use some grammar, then they find it really difficult uh, because they haven't studied the grammar through maybe a more structured course. So everyone has their own different learning style and that's natural, that's okay, but try to um, use different ways instead of just the one that you always use. All right, so um, let's move on to number five. Okay. Successful English learners challenge themselves, okay? This goes perfectly with the one we talked about before about diversifying your English experience. Um, sometimes it can be tempting to stick with what's easy, right? So if reading is easy for you, then um, maybe you only read. Or if music is easy for you, then you only work with music. But successful English learners challenge themselves. And this is the way that you get beyond your current level. If you're reading an article and you can understand everything 100%, or if you're doing a grammar or a vocabulary exercise and you're getting 100% or close to 100% on everything, that means you need to challenge yourself and do something different or more difficult. Okay, because that is the way that you're going to grow. All right. Uh, so it's um, don't just stay in your comfort zone. You need to challenge yourself and just become a little bit uncomfortable in order to really grow and make progress. Now, on the other hand, don't try to do something that is like impossible. So if you're a beginner in English, maybe watching a movie is going to be too hard because you're going to understand like close to nothing. Or maybe you pick up a famous work of literature and it has some really high level uh, obscure vocabulary and it just becomes frustrating. So you need to challenge yourself in a way that you are learning new things, you are uh, developing your English, but not so that it's going to be impossible. Okay, think about like, imagine someone who never does exercise trying to pick up a 400 pound weight. That's about 200 kilograms, something like that. It's gonna be impossible, right? They're not even going to be able to pick it up one inch. But if they start with uh, something smaller, maybe 20 pounds, and then they uh, practice and they increase, then they go up to 30 and to 40 and to 50, each step is going to be a little bit difficult and a little bit uncomfortable, but that's how they're going to make the progress. If they just stay at 20 pounds forever, then they're not going to make any progress. So 
to learn English successfully, you need to challenge yourself. And so that means finding things that I recommend you should be reading or listening to things where you can understand 50 to 75 percent. Okay? That means that there's room for you to improve. So you're reading an article and you understand maybe 70% of the words and expressions, that means you can learn the other 30% by uh, checking a dictionary, asking an English-speaking friend. So you're going to actually improve your English. Um, and once you're at the level where you can understand 95 or 100%, then find a different or more difficult uh, article to read. All right, so successful English students actively challenge themselves. They don't just stay at the same level forever because it feels good uh, to always be getting 100%. They challenge themselves to go further. All right, uh, do, you, do you challenge yourself in English? Write in the chat something that is uh, difficult for you in English and um, something that you find challenging. Yeah, someone said that successful English learners challenge uh, themselves means believing in yourself and the confidence. Yeah, that's a good point. I'm going to get to that next. Um, let's see. Uh, you have to be like children. Right, exactly. So, you know, children, they like to learn new things. And even if it's difficult, uh, they're, they're going to try it, right? Children will sometimes try things even if it's impossible because they don't know better yet. But um, it really is good to go back to that mindset of, hey, I can do it. Let me try something that's difficult because that's how I'm going to um, develop and uh, uh, grow. Um, it's true that, uh, yes, yeah, speaking on the phone, that's definitely challenging because you can't see the other person. You know, when you're watching me speak right now, it's a little bit easier to understand because you can see my mouth. But when you speak on the phone, it's really uh, hard because you can't see the other person and sometimes the connection is bad. Um, it's challenging for sure. Uh, okay, let's, are you guys ready to learn the last secret? This is maybe the most important one. Okay. Successful English learners enjoy the process. So, um, your goal in English is to become fluent or to speak like a native speaker, right? But sometimes it's easy to get discouraged because you're not there yet. You haven't reached that level yet. And so sometimes I see some learners who are just frustrated all the time. They're always comparing themselves to native speakers and realizing that they're not speaking as well. And so I would, you know, some of them have this attitude like, I won't be happy until I'm fluent. And that's really not a good attitude to have because first of all, fluency is a long process. It takes years of study and practice. And, um, you know, some people go faster than others, but it takes a long time. You know, it takes at least three, four or five years. So why be miserable uh, during the whole way? It's a lot more fun to enjoy the process and enjoy the results. So if you find yourself thinking, uh, my English is bad, um, it's not good enough, I'm always making mistakes, or uh, oh, I'm not fluent yet, this is taking forever, uh, I'm not sure if I'll ever get there, put those negative thoughts out of your head and replace it with this one that's written in green, which is, I'm making progress and getting better every day. So every time that you invest time in working on your English, you are making a step towards your goal. You are accomplishing something positive by putting in that time. Um, you are one step closer. And so I really encourage you, my most successful students, they have a positive attitude. They know that they're not yet perfect, but they have a positive attitude so that they can enjoy the process and they can um, celebrate their successes, okay? Uh, they can be happy about what they've accomplished so far. And um, 
yeah, they they enjoy the process. And that's just that just makes the whole experience of learning English a lot more fun because you can be happy when you're learning and you can be happy when you're uh, proficient or when you're fluent. So I really encourage you if you find yourself tending towards the negative or tending to um, just think of your English abilities in a unfavorable in an unfavorable way. Turn that attitude around and celebrate what you've accomplished so far uh, and look forward to even better things in the future. The other way that you can enjoy the process is by learning English in um, by using some methods and some topics that you enjoy. So I really think that if you have an interest in a particular area, whether that's um, current events, whether it's a particular sport or an activity or art, whatever it is, everyone has interests, uh, try to find some English material around that area of interest because you're going to enjoy learning while you also enjoy learning about your hobby or interest. Um, why don't you write in the chat one topic that you're interested in uh, that you also can find some information about, okay? Uh, let's see. Someone said no audio. Can you guys hear me? Hear me? Politics. Yep. There's ton. There are tons of. Uh, there are tons of English podcasts in around politics and news articles and everything. Um, okay. Good. Thank you. Uh, let's see. If you read and listen to good things, you will learn good things. Great. Okay. Um, if someone could understand everything you're saying, what is the level of that person? I will get to that uh, in at the end with some questions. Okay. Um, if you can't hear me, check the sound on your computer. Okay. Okay, so part of enjoying the process is learning um, about topics that you enjoy. I really think that's important because you have to have fun while learning. Otherwise, you're just going to uh, give up, okay? And I don't want you to give up. I want you to continue until you really reach that high level of English where you can be very comfortable and um, you know, confident in your, in your own English. And the other aspect of enjoying the process is working with the teacher who you enjoy learning from. So if you're here in uh, in today's live cast, then you probably enjoy learning from me, and I'm so happy that you do. Uh, but every teacher has a different style, a different way of uh, teaching the lessons, and I think that I think that learning from various teachers is important, but you should also try to learn as much as you can from the teacher who really inspires you and you can you feel like you can make the most progress, okay? So I'm going to take uh, questions in just a moment. Uh, if you have a question, please uh, write it in the chat. But first, I want to ask you, which of today's tips was your favorite? Okay, so think back on uh, the tips we we went over. I'll list them real quickly. Successful students uh, make a habit of studying. Number two, successful learners put their English into practice. Number three, successful learners don't let fear stop them. Number four, successful learners study in different ways. Number five, successful learners challenge themselves. And number six, successful learners learn to enjoy the process. Okay, so a few people said that they liked hearing about habits. Um, when you talk about confidence, yeah, it's really important. You know, confidence grows with time. Um, my confidence definitely grew with time in making these videos and in speaking Portuguese and in um, learning ice skating. I do some ice skating sometimes. So confidence... Uh, grows as you progress. Studying in different ways, uh, habits, practice studying in different ways. Wonderful. I'm so glad you guys enjoyed the um, this class. And if you do these things, 
If you do all six of these and you make these part of how you learn English, then you're going to make a lot of progress in the upcoming year in 2017. And I'm sure that 12 months from now, you'll be able to say, wow, I made a lot of progress. I'm really happy with what I accomplished this year. Um, and you're one year closer to being fluent. So you might be wondering, okay, I've got all these tips for studying and I want to put them into practice so that I can really improve my English faster, but what material should I use or what course should I follow? Well, that's why I have something called the Complete Program at Espresso English. And the Complete Program is basically all of my courses and ebooks okay that's 11 courses and 3 ebooks and the great thing about the complete program is that it covers pretty much all the areas of the language so let me show you um, the complete program includes phrasal verbs in conversation the everyday English speaking course levels one and two those courses really focus on spoken English and you'll get to learn from conversations it includes the American English pronunciation course which is a pronunciation training program as well as shadowing with Shana which, which is another way to help you really improve your accent We've also got two levels of the Vocabulary Builder course. Uh, level one is easier, level two is a little higher level, so you can build your vocabulary and learn new words to really be able to express yourself. We've also got uh, the English Listening course. That's a great course. It's a little bit challenging. It includes 45 audio lessons which are available at both slow speeds and fast speeds, and we've also got English speakers from the US and uh, the UK, so British and American English and Australian English. There's idioms and slang, so I have a course on idioms and an ebook on slang, so you can learn that aspect of the English language as well. I also have books to help you with confusing words and collocations. Collocations are typical combinations of words. And then the Confusing English Words Explained book will help you avoid the common errors that students tend to make. The Complete Program also includes the Business English course, which is really important if you're studying English for work or you think you might want to work for an English-speaking company one day. That course is specifically geared towards helping you with the vocabulary and the phrases and expressions that you'll need in the workplace. And then finally, we have Advanced English Grammar, which will really make grammar clear for you and um, yeah, there's, uh, there, there are also writing exercises in that course where you can send in your text for correction. So as you can see, this complete program really covers a lot. And because um, I want all of the areas of your English to be strong. I don't want you just to be strong in grammar, but bad in listening. And I don't want you to know vocabulary, but not phrasal verbs. I want you to learn everything. And so that's why I created this program. And as you can see, if you buy the complete program, there's actually a 35% discount. So if you bought each product individually, it would cost $395. But when you buy everything together, the discount makes it cost just $247, OK? I accept payment by credit card or PayPal. Or if you live in Brazil, I can take a bank deposit. And here's a nice little bonus that when you buy the complete program, I will send you a free USB drive that will look kind of like this one. And the USB drive will have everything already downloaded uh, on it. So after you buy the program, you'll get instant access uh, to the lessons online. And you can download them too, but it's kind of annoying to download hundreds and hundreds of lessons one by one. So the idea behind the USB drive is that I will send this to you in the mail, in the postal uh, mail, and then you'll already have the, uh, the lessons all together on this one USB drive. A couple of comments from students who have taken the program. This is 
Andrianina from France, and she says, I have bought the complete Espresso English program, and all I can say is that I'm loving it. The method used is truly great, and it has been working well for me so far. Courses are easy to understand, well detailed, and perfectly explained, along with exercises or quizzes you can send to Shana for being corrected and getting feedback afterwards. So if you feel like improving or sharpening your English level, Espresso is there for you. It's actually a masterpiece. Go for it without any hesitation. I'm so happy that she enjoyed the program so much, and I hope you'll enjoy it too. Okay, so if you're looking for a structured way to learn all the different aspects of the English language, then get the complete program. You'll save 35% because of the discount, and I think you'll really enjoy learning through all of my different courses. There are more than 400 lessons in there, so even if you do one lesson every day, you'll have more than one year of lessons to take, and it's a really great value for the price. I mean, think about how much think about how much it would cost to to take a full year of lessons with a private teacher and in this case you get um, all the lessons self-study uh, you can of course write to me for help and support and correction of the exercises that need c correction uh, so I'll be your teacher on call alright so I will put a link to the complete program under this video if you'd like to learn more about it uh, I'll also put a link to some free samples Samples also under this video so you can take free sample lessons from everything in the program and just see if it's right for you I hope to see you in there so let me answer some questions okay is it true that most people from English speaking countries don't know perfect grammar um, they say they're native English speakers but they don't know perfect grammar yeah you know native English speakers don't use perfect grammar when speaking because spoken English is a little more informal and a little more flexible than written English. So it's important to be able to dominate both spoken and written English. But if you're worried about grammar mistakes when you speak, try to just be a little less worried because even native English speakers, we don't speak perfectly. We don't really even learn the rules in school. We learn some of them, but we really learn more through hearing them, like hearing our parents talk to us, and then reproducing them. Um, so if you tend to get bogged down in rules, meaning if you kind of get stuck when you're studying grammar rules, uh, try not to obsess too much about them. Try to speak, try to write, get a native speaking friend to correct you, and um, you'll be able to make some progress. Uh, this lesson is being recorded. Yes, this lesson is being recorded, so you will be able to watch it later uh, and review all the tips that we talked about today. Another question that I saw earlier was about if, um, if someone can understand everything they're saying, everything, sorry, that I'm saying today, what level does that make them? I'm speaking at about, an, I'm speaking, I'd say, about at an intermediate level. Okay, so if you can understand everything I'm saying, uh, then you're probably about intermediate. I'm speaking at my normal speed right now, but I am trying to avoid a lot of idioms and slang because I want to, today, in this class right now, my goal is to um, really communicate the learning tips instead of teaching you idioms. And I don't, I didn't want anyone to be left out if I was using some more informal expressions. So I would say right now I'm talking at about an intermediate level, okay? Um, to give a really quick question, uh, answer to this question about there is versus there are, um, in normally we use there is plus a singular uh, noun. So there is a table in the room and there are with a, a plural noun so there are two chairs in the room but sometimes in practice we get a little sloppy so sometimes we say things like there's chairs in the room it should be there are chairs so that's an example of how sometimes native English speakers don't always follow the rules and also if you're gonna talk about two things like there is 
a table and a chair in the room, if it's two singular things, we still use there is. It actually follows whatever the first noun is going to be. Okay, so we say there is a table and two chairs in the room. Or there are two chairs and one table in the room. All right. Is American pronunciation more difficult than British? Uh, I think that depends on you, depends on what you're more used to listening to. Um, some people find British pronunciation uh, er, uh, easier, other people find American pronunciation easier to understand. Um, so just depends on your preference. Someone asked, how much time is needed to learn English if I study six hours today? You know, students ask me all the time how long it's going to take for them to become fluent. And it's really hard for me to give an answer because it really depends so much. It depends on your own native language and how similar or different it is when compared to English. It depends on your own language learning ability. So some people really just get languages quickly and other people it takes a little bit more time, okay? It depends on how much you study. So all of these factors honestly contribute. If your uh, native language is one where they have a different alphabet or a different way of writing, then it's going to take even more time because first you have to learn the letters in English and then you have to go ahead with the vocabulary and pronunciation, okay? so. Uh, it's, I can't give any sort of answer on this. It's so individual. All right. Um, let's see. Where can you find native speakers? Well, as I mentioned earlier, you can join a conversation exchange website. So just Google search for conversation exchange, sign up, and you'll find people who will be willing to exchange uh, English practice with practice in your native language. All right. Um, you can also find them on the italki. Yeah, italki is a website that has a whole bunch of teachers. And um, yeah, uh, you can make English friends online. Go to EnglishBaby.com. Go to italki.com. We are so lucky that we have the internet nowadays to connect us with other people all around the world. So just uh, you can reach out to other people. You can also uh, talk to yourself. Okay, any other uh, questions, questions. All right, let me take a look. The best way to learn idioms and slang. Yeah, great question. Okay, so idioms and slang. I really think that the best way to learn these is in context. Okay, so you might find around the internet like lists of idioms or lists of slang words or slang dictionaries. They're not great because honestly it's going to be more memorable this an idiom or a slang expression when it's in a context so I remember when I uh, was learning Portuguese uh, there was there was a situation where I invited my friend over but then he didn't come at the right time and uh, my my host mother the woman I was living with she said the equivalent of in Portuguese oh he stood you up and I said he stood me up? What What does that mean? I don't understand. And she said, oh, that's an expression. That means he said he would come, but then he didn't come and he didn't give any explanation. So the idiom for that in English is to stand someone up. So if someone, if you invite someone out on a date, for example, and then they don't come and you, they leave you totally alone without any communication, then they stood you up. But the best way to remember that expression is in the context of the situation because it's going to be very memorable. You remember uh, uh, waiting there alone and how frustrated or annoyed you were. And so when you see the situation together with the idiom, that's what makes it memorable. So uh, that's why movies are good for this. TV shows are good. And if you see a phrase in a movie or a TV show that you don't know what it means, check idioms.thefreedictionary.com. Let me type that in the chat. Mm, idioms.thefreedictionary.com. That's a great site where you can look up uh, common idioms and slang words, okay? Or you can, uh, you can ask a native speaking friend. You can ask me. Because, uh, yeah, we, we use 
slang and idioms a lot and mostly in informal conversation. I also have a couple of courses to help you with this. If you take my English idioms course or buy my English slang ebook, then those all have hundreds of common expressions that native English speakers uh, use. Um, someone asked about EF Live. Is that okay to improve my English? Honestly, I don't know that much about uh, other companies or, or websites. I just know that if you feel like you're making progress, then stick with it. Um, Diallo says, we, nowadays we have a lot of materials to learn. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. That's a great uh, proverb that we have. So think about you have a horse and you think maybe the horse is thirsty. And so you bring your horse to a river. And, but the horse just kind of stands there and looks at you and he doesn't want to drink. So what this proverb is saying is that you can give somebody everything they need but if the person doesn't have that inner uh, desire or that inner motivation or that, um, I don't know, the willpower to, to do it, then they're not going to do it. They're not going to make any progress. And so the how we can compare that to English learning is that nowadays we have so many resources available. We have websites. We have conversation exchange. We have uh, Facebook groups where you can interact with other English learners. We have courses, online courses like the ones at Espresso English and the English Power Pack. Um, we have so much information available at our fingertips. That means um, easily accessible. But that means that the desire and the energy has to come from inside. Okay, And that is one thing I see among my most successful students is they have that. They want to learn English. And so they want it so much that they make time for it, they put in the hours, they practice it, they seek out different ways and challenging ways to learn. And so if you're struggling with English and, and you're, you're blaming external things like, oh, I don't have material or I can't find a speaking partner, try to look inside yourself and come up with creative solutions to that because everything you need, um, yeah, some people say that, uh, they're, they're clapping. Yeah, yeah, we need to fight if we want to learn English. Okay, I'm going to wrap up there. That means I'm going to finish. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today. I had a really great time uh, teaching you all and interacting with you in the chat. And I hope that what you've learned today will help you have a great rest of 2016 and a great 2017 when it comes to learning English. If you take one of these tips and put it into practice, I would love it if you could write to me afterwards and tell me how it helped you because I love to hear it when my students put things into practice and then um, tell me how it helped them or how it improved uh, their English, how it changed their lives. All right. If you want to get my future live lessons, make sure that you are subscribed to the Espresso English channel on YouTube. That is at youtube.com slash Espresso English net. Okay. Or just search uh, on YouTube for Espresso English and you will find me. When you uh, follow me on YouTube, then you'll get notifications of my future live lessons. Uh, I think you guys will enjoy all of my videos. Thank you so much. I'm going to sign off. Bye for now.